What's up guys, Chris VA Travels. And I'm out here, I um, came back out here to Westmoreland County. I'm going to visit Wakefield, the birthplace of George Washington. Anyway, so I'm gonna go inside and check in just to let you know it's free. And right here, uh, five fun facts about George. And didn't have a middle name, didn't sign the Declaration of Independence, uh, and he loved to dance. So, yeah, about to enter the Visitor Center. Um, they're open 9.30 until 5, Wednesday until Sunday. I just checked in. Um, they give you a ticket for the house tour. Um, it starts at 11 o'clock, so I've got some time to kill. So, take a look around. And a map of some of the Native American sites, it looks like, uh, along the Potomac here. Over here, a few coins, 1932, George Washington's profile was minted on the quarter to commemorate his 200th birthday. Big bicentennial, bicentennial coin right there. The Washington Mint, Mount Rushmore. And yeah, collecting spoons used to be a thing. And George Washington was the fourth generation Washington to live here in America. And his great grandfather was the first settler, John Washington. And the story, he, uh, he settled here in 1657. He came over, he was second in command on a ship that actually wrecked, uh, wrecked in Colonial Beach. I don't know, it's an it's intended uh, destination. So, yeah. So while here, he started working for Nathaniel Pope. I uh, ended up marrying his daughter, Ann Pope. So that's what prompted him to stay. And Nathaniel Pope, prominent figure, he gave them uh, a lot of land when they got married uh, along the Maddox Creek here. So you've got the Maddox Creek, Bridges Creek, and Pope's Creek, um, where, where we're at right now. So yeah, that was his home, 1657, to let you know Colonial Beach is kind of up here. Yeah, so anyway, next in line, George's grandfather, Lawrence. Oh, and just to let you know, if you want to go way back, Soulgrave Manor in England is where John came from. His father was Reverend Lawrence, hence the name of his son, Reverend Lawrence Washington. And you can actually visit Soulgrave Manor. It's about an hour and a half north of London. You can take the train up there, <laughs> just to let you know. So yeah, his son died at 38 years old. He was uh, kind of a politician. He was in the House of Burgesses. And then his son, Augustine, of course, George's father. And he's the one who built the house George was uh, born in here on Pope's Creek. So the family, uh, yeah, ended up building the house there. Right, and that obelisk you see when you first look inside, it was originally, it's, uh, it's modeled, it's one-tenth the size of the big obelisk up there in D.C. And it was originally placed on the site that they thought was the, the house. Uh, they were off a little bit, but, and it was surrounded by a gate, and here's the, uh, the front door to the gate. So, yeah, the lady said she would play this later on. There's a little, uh, short little film you can watch and uh, Fredericksburg on the Rappahannock I'll grab that and just to give you a quick peek pretty nice uh, pretty nice theater yeah so I'm gonna head out and walk around Okay, so the house is gonna be that way. 
kind of a short walk, maybe a quarter of a mile. And so Pope's Creek, which leads out in, into the Potomac. Fairly calm water. And so this area was established as a park in 1931 and half of the land was purchased and then donated by John Rockefeller Jr. of Rockefeller Plaza fame up in New York City. I visited that a couple, a couple months ago, made a video, go check it out. Yeah, so gonna head down, take, take a look at the house. Creek Plantation and to orient you here's the house or oh, I'm sorry this is the restoration uh, of the house the original house was uh, somewhere in this area and yeah so Pope's Creek which leads out to the Potomac and it's just saying here Augustine Washington uh, settled settled here 1718 built the house in the 1720s and I can see a little bit of it up there. And there it is. Pretty big complex, a, a lot of outbuildings. Check all those out. And to tell you about the preservation efforts, uh, spoiler alert, the house burned down 1779. This area was kind of left uh, abandoned, uh, untouched until 1850, 1815 when George Washington Park Custis came to visit. That's the grandson of George and Martha. And uh, he placed a big stone here in, in memorial on the spot uh, of what he thought was the house. Again, he, he was a little bit off. Bunch of cedar trees over here, kind of neat. Pretty neat birdhouse over here. Big uh, eagle up there, it looks like. Hawk or eagle, I don't know, but. Yeah, it's a little overgrown, but it looks like if it was tidied up, it'd be a uh, pretty nice garden. Nice breeze coming in off the river or the creek. Uh, pretty cool dragonfly down here or butterfly mm. Yeah, so obviously doing some archaeology work over there and I'm pretty sure that's the site of the original house So they were a little off which may be a good thing. They were um, they might have uh, They might have destroyed a few things I have a feeling I might be eating a couple spider webs walking through here.
Wakefield or a recreation of Wakefield. And yeah, this was built in 1931. And yeah, unfortunately there were no pictures or drawings of the original house. So they don't know exactly what it looked like. So they just built kind of a, a standard colonial style uh, upper class house from, from that period. <sighs> Pretty neat, the two exterior chimneys over there. And this was actually only named Wakefield for about five years. Its third owner, William Augustine Washington, uh, which would be the step-nephew of George. Uh, he, the house was originally built in the 1720s, as I had said. Uh, he fixed it up in 1774. That's when he named it Wakefield. And like I say, it burned down 1779. And I'll walk over here and get a, get a shot of the front. So there were three, three owners. Uh, first, George's father, Augustine Washington. Then it was passed to Augustine Washington Jr. And then it was passed to his son, son who I had just mentioned, William Augustine Washington. So. 1932, that brought all the very important speakers and so forth to the property after you. Mm -hmm. the and so, being that this is a colonial revival building, inside the master bed chamber is a black and white photograph of a woman who was instrumental in the furniture being here. Her name was Louise Dupont Cranenshield, member of the Dupont family. She grew up in the ownership of the furniture and so forth over to Philip Huff, who was the first National Park Superintendent to this park, arriving here in. And he was given that on assignment, having been a World War I veteran. So you're looking at the dining room, a uh, typical setup of an upper class home. You used to have crank up the eight fireplaces, after which time you would have a dry, warm building. And of course, outside you see a view similar to the one that the Washingtons would have had from this property Pope's Creeks. My photograph of the woman who was instrumental in this entire process taking place. Her name was Josephine Little Wright Russ. She was a distant relative of the Washingtons who lived at the home of Twyford, after which this building is modeled. Since at the time they had no idea of exactly what George's two-story room would look like, they decided to build this building and make it brick on the outside for so that it would last while it's burning down by George's original natural views. The Latinese and Muses are descendants of the Washingtons who either still own property adjacent to the park or within the confines of the park. When you drove up to the tall obelisk, you drove through Latin property and Muse property is within the confines of the park. Julia uh, occupied a particular interesting position in park history. As far as we know, she's the only Washington family member to have been employed in flowering plants from the colonial period um, that you can take a look at. Cool. Thank you for coming, sir. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. You're informative. Thanks. Just took the house tour. Um, pretty cool. They let me film, which was awesome. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the second floor is closed off for restoration. Uh, there's a cellar as well that you can't go into right now. So, yeah, I'm here at the kitchen. And just to let you know, originally the kitchen was the only thing that uh, that survived the, the big fire. And it lasted until 1879 when it eventually crumbled. So, walk in here. Yeah, like I say, all this was constructed in 1931. Colonial re Revival style. Yeah, strong smell of ash, burned wood. Looks like they're making some candles right there. And doing some laundry. Big open hearth fireplace. And I can imagine it was pretty hot in here. Hmm. Oh, maybe cleaning clothing down there. A couple buckets for water. Writing desk. Um, an old radio. Obviously, this is more recent. 
zenith. Pretty neat design on this chair. And the furniture in the house was donated by uh, a member of the DuPont, a female from the DuPont family, and I believe her name was Louisa DuPont. And she's from Winterthur up there in Wilmington, Delaware. Yeah, pretty neat furniture. Where are you from? Puerto Rico, Portugal, Wales. Well, all right. Huh. Okay, wrong door. <laughs> Boy, all right. <laughs> and the only other building that you can walk in um, would be the blacksmith shop. I'm gonna make my way down there. I'm gonna assume I can touch this. And it is a trash can. Yeah, so I found out they're not 100% sure that's the original site. Um, they're going to be working on that through the summer, and they're going to write up a report that should be ready by about November, he said, to uh, let them know if that was the original site. So, yeah, it looks like there was a, a building here. Let's see what this says, a dairy. All right, the site of 18th century dairy. You saw the Washingtons, of course, to store milk, cheese, dairy products. And, yeah, it would make sense. You would have the uh, dairy fairly close by. There's a few people walking. And I have to ask him what those are. All, all, none of these, um, well, I guess, I, as I had stated, are, are original. Also, to tell you, the original house would have been wooden and wouldn't have been as, as nice as that one. Yeah, all right. Demonstration shop, blacksmith shop. Yeah, there it is right there. All the tools back there. And some stuff for woodworking, a lathe it looks like maybe, not exactly sure. Oh huh, yeah, a lathe right there. Big old saw. Okay, drying some tobacco over here. And of course, tobacco is what they grew. And Augustine, between all of his sites, owned 40 some slaves, uh, I believe, I believe is um, what he had said. He owned this house and he owned Little Creek, which uh, turned into Mount Vernon, and there was one more property. I don't know, it looks like a little, are they for? Chicken? No, this, this would be for animals. Walk down and take a look at this building. Yeah, you can't... Uh, Colonial Cottage, uh, this is a spinning room, spinning and weaving. And these plantations were basically just small little towns. They were self-sufficient. Uh, if you needed clothes, you had to make them. If you needed nails, <laughs> you had to make them. Uh, this is just a, a little bathroom. 
Okay, gonna walk down the trail. And as I said, real nice breeze coming down off the creek. A little cedar forest here, it looks like. And so this creek is a really brackish water. It's, it's salt water and uh, mixed with fresh water. So you've got salt water fish, fresh water fish. Yeah, I can smell, I can tell it's uh, salt water. All right, a couple trails over here. Hopefully it's not muddy. Picnic area, nature trail. Um, I don't know, I'll walk here along the water. Oh, something just jumped out of the water. Well, you know, there's a rule on my channel. Uh, anytime I walk by an old house, I, I need to take a look. So yeah, it looks like a log house up here. I see some canoes over there, Port of John. Oh, I hope nobody lives here. I mean, you would think they would say uh, no trespassing, but yeah, log cabin. Oh, that might be a police officer's car, actually. I see a light there on the side. Walk over there. A big uh, propane tank, looks like. Uh, kind of a neat little door right there. It's got a snow shovel still out here. Yeah, park ranger. Maybe this is just kind of being used as a uh, park ranger's office. Overflow parking. I think that's probably going to be the picnic area. Um, it says Pope, Pope's Creek Conference Center. So, yeah. All right, well. Just wanted to take a look at that. Yeah, I think I can barely make out a sign down there that says uh, picnic area. And I guess it kind of, road kind of wraps around. Oh, snake. Black snake snuck down into those uh, weeds there, those reeds. All right, so I'm, yeah, I'm gonna head back over. As I walk back across, um, I'll just let you know, the reason I've been stuck kind of in the Fredericksburg area the last few weeks is because I recently got married. So I've been kind of busy with that and uh, yeah, that, that's why I was at the Richard Johnston Inn. We stayed there that weekend, had a little ceremony in the backyard. And uh, yeah, shouldn't change anything. My wife, which sounds weird to say, we, uh, I called her my girlfriend for nine years. She's cool about this whole thing. And uh, yeah, our honeymoon is going to be in September, headed to England. Pretty cool to, uh, pretty excited to announce that. And usually I like to stay quiet and kind of pop up in random places, but yeah, it's kind of a big win. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to. And usually when I travel overseas, I book everything myself, uh, the flight, the hotels, the rental, the excursions individually, so I can kind of pace it, pace it out how I want. But this time, because of COVID, I went through a uh, tour group, a uh, travel agency. So, and I know how those go. Some, so, sometimes these places kind of rush you. So I'm kind of worried about how my videos might turn out, but and also a lot of times you're kind of trapped in a crowd of people where it's kind of hard to film hard to talk to the camera but we'll see how it uh we'll see how it works out
Yeah, so little plaque over here. I wanted to take a look at it. Okay, great view here. Here it is, Pope's Creek. And about seven miles away across there is Maryland. Okay, Artery of Commerce. Yeah, just talking about commerce along the Potomac. Looks like normally maybe they have some pigs in there anyway so yeah done with the uh the house tour i'm gonna hop in my car and i'm gonna drive down to the family cemetery so it's the uh, bridges creek cemetery uh, i don't know it's about a mile away so cemetery and just taking a look at this marker the Henry Brooks farm Henry Brooks built this house on the other side of the field back in 1651 one of the first to settle the area and it was a 20 by 19 foot dwelling <clears throat> and if you continue down the road there's a little beach there on the Potomac so cemetery is going to be back there Pretty well kept area, lined with a few cedar trees. And while I'm walking, uh, to give you some advice, if you come out here, it's pretty remote. Not many places to eat, so maybe pack a lunch. Uh, there's one gas station off of uh, Route 3, maybe five miles back where you can fuel up. Other than that, not much. And the John Washington house and yeah, George's great grandfather. And it doesn't say exactly where, but somewhere in this area, John Washington built his house, wooden structure, 20 by 40 feet. And uh, it says it looked like he had two outbuildings. <clears throat> the burial ground. All right, that's what it used to look like uh, in 1930. So the first bodies were buried here back in 1668 and uh, 12 direct descendants uh, of George back here. And it, at the time it looked nothing like this. Uh, this wall was built by the Wakefield National Memorial Association when they set this place up back in the 1930s. And to let you know, Right here is the Washington family crest. I don't know if this bird is part of it, but uh, yeah, right here, that's it. Augustine Washington, George's father. Married twice, first to Jane Butler, and then of course Mary Ball, Mary Ball Washington, who was born a little further east down the uh, northern neck in Lancaster County. And, uh, of course, the mother of George Washington. And here's Lawrence, his grandfather. Married Mildred Warner. And the ancient brick vault beneath the stone was rebuilt. Okay, it looks like graves were reinterred April 28th, 1930 by the Wakefield National Memorial Association. So this is probably John. Yeah, John Washington, the uh, the patriarch, like I said, married to Ann Pope, and she would have been the first buried here. Yeah, 1668 or nine, I guess this is. 
trying to say John Washington and Captain George Washington son of John and Anne so I don't know his uncle and Augustine Washington this would be his older George's older stepbrother and he was the second owner of Wakefield The body of John Washington again, eldest son of Captain Lawrence Washington. Departed his life 1690. Oh, aged 10 years. He was 10 years old, 10 months. Oh. Here lies the body of Jean, the wife of Augustine Washington. Uh, she died 1729. Left behind two sons and one daughter. So. All right, this is the burial grounds. And I might just take a drive down there, take a look at the water, and then get out of here, so. Pretty happening spot. All right, that's the Potomac. And sign just talks about how there was a, a boat landing near there. All right, I've seen it all getting out of here. And as always, like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon. See you.